Bonjour, Cardi Gamers here, and I hope you're all having a wonderful day today. We gotta talk about an epidemic cr sweeping the lost dark nation of Arcasia. When do you stop buying the chest in your abyssals, in your legion raids, in your abyssal raids? When do you buy them and when don't you buy them? I wanna jump into my thought process around this entire subject because I feel like everyone's just been buying them nonstop and it is a massive leech on your gold. But before we jump into it, you guys know the drill. If you guys enjoy my content, sub to the channel. If you like the videos, make sure to like them and check me out on Twitch. If you're hearing me right now, I am already live. So click that link in the description box. I am actually gonna be doing hell mode progression for the first time tonight on stream. So if you wanna check that out, be sure to click that link. Lastly, join the community Discord. It's one of a bunch of incredible people. If you're looking for people to hang out with, chat with, play some Lost Ark with, it is definitely the place you want to be. Now let's jump into this video. So let's talk about the chest. At the end of all of your abyssals, at the end of your legion raids, you always have the opportunity to buy a chest, and it gives you a lot of good rewards. Now, this spreadsheet I have here, and I'll be linking this in the description box down below for you guys, will actually automatically calculate the value of the chest uh, based off of your region's prices. Now, you would just take this area here, you make a copy of this file, and in this box right here, you put in the AH value of these materials, and then when you run, it'll actually give you the numbers on what's worth and what's not worth. Now, when I put in my actual prices, uh, suddenly everything's green. Every single chest is worth buying according to this spreadsheet, and maybe it is, but I think it goes a little bit deeper and you have to actually analyze why are you buying the chest. I think the thing that stands out the most here is Argos. Argos' value is insane, 200% value, 300%, there's like 800% value in running Argos. However, a lot of this is in the Argos bloods because as you'll see down here, it does take into consideration that you would be melting down your Argos bloods and turning them into greater honor leapstones. So does that mean it's just automatically worth just always buying the Argos chest? If most of the value from this is coming from greater honors or maybe from uh, uh, honor shards, is this a character you're planning on pushing immediately? On a lot of my characters, I've actually stopped buying the chest, including on my main for some, for some of their content. My main is parked and a lot of my alts are parked. And so by the time I end up actually pushing them, they're gonna have a ton of shards and a ton of greater honor leapstones already bound to them. And so it's not gonna be what's actually limiting my character from actually progressing. So what's the point of every single week burning my gold and investing into honing materials that I'm never gonna really end up using? Now the other side of this is jewelry. Obviously all of the bonus chests give bonus jewelry. And it is very hard to quantify the value of that because I mean, you guys will know how often you get a good piece that actually ends up selling for a lot. It's hard to tell, right? You're tapping it more often, you're getting more chances. And so this is the gamma part where realistically, if you if this thing says that it's worth it monetarily from just the materials and you like to gamble and hopefully get a nice piece, then buying the chest is obviously just a straightforward yes. But you really have to consider how often do you actually get a piece that's worth selling. I think the most complicated part is when you get to Legion Commanders. On my alts, I actually don't buy the Legion Commander chests. The reason for this is that I don't really get too much extra from getting the Legion Commander chest, at least in normal. Now, yes, I would get extra uh, Demon's Bones or Vicus Bones or whatever it is. When you really start to think about it, when am I pushing my characters past 1415 or even 1430? They can't craft their, uh, their Relic set until 1445, and at least for me, I don't plan on pushing them anytime soon. If maybe I have a character who's gonna get there faster and I'm starting to notice that, okay, well, if I calculate that, calculate that I'm planning on getting there in two weeks and he's not gonna have enough bones to start building a set, then yeah, maybe I'll start buying the chest. But if I'm planning on sitting a character for like a month, why would I keep buying the chest and cutting into how much gold I'm earning? Because these chests are very, very, very expensive. The same goes for my main character. My main isn't really honing right now. My main is in her six piece relic set. She's got her six piece entropy. And so I'm not buying the chest every week on her. What I do is I just buy the fused leapstone chest. So for uh, Vaulton, I'll buy gate two. And then for Vicus, I'll buy gate three. The reason for this is I'm saving fused leapstones for my Brochaza gear. When Brochaza comes out, uh, fused leapstones will be able to be used on it or at least converted into another leapstone that can be used on the Brochaza gear. So it'll be a lot of free taps on that gear set. And that's gonna be valuable for me because the Brochaza gear set uses a new set of honing materials, which are gonna be very hard to get because only my main will be able to naturally acquire them. So having a bunch of fused leapstones saved is gonna be valuable because realistically, my character's already ahead of content. My character's ready for Cuckoo and I could just push her for Brel. And when Brel comes out, then I can hone that new set of gear at super high rates for free pretty much. And my logic around it is, 
I just kind of need the liquid gold. If I have a ton of gold I'm sitting on, I don't know what really to do with my gold, and I just want honing mats for my main, sure, buying the chest isn't necessarily a bad thing. I mean, this thing says that it's valuable, right? But th something you need to remember here is when you compare these two spreadsheets, this is the original prices. Obviously, this is for a different region. These prices may be way off. But the one thing you'll notice that really changed here is the shard prices went up in US East, and the leapstone prices and pretty much all the material prices went down. So a lot of these become valuable because of the shard prices. And again, if shards are something that's blocking you off, then maybe this is worth the purchase. But I kind of wanted to talk about this to have the deeper conversation on, is it worth always buying the chest? I mean, it's the obvious answer is like, you know, if you get that like 30K, 40K, 100K piece of jewelry from the chest, you'll be really happy. But how often does that happen? And how much gold are you going to burn into the chest system uh, to actually get that piece? Will you ever get that piece? I don't even know. I haven't seen the 100k piece of jewelry yet. <laughs> Hopefully it's coming at some point. But it's just a discussion where the price of materials is dropping in pretty much every single zone. The value of gold is going up in every single region. I think it's important to start thinking about what are you planning on doing with these characters when you're buying these chests? Are you planning on pushing them right away? Then hell yeah, buy these chests. You get extra, extra materials. As long as the value seems good, why not go for it? Because you're planning on pushing them soon. But if these characters are going to park and rot for a long time in the same content, that gold has value because chances are if your main is sitting, if you have alt sitting, chances are your gold is doing something else. Maybe you're buying engraving books. Maybe you're buying jewelry. Maybe you're setting up your alts. Maybe you're pushing more alts to 14, 15. Whatever that action is, you need that liquid gold to interact with gold sync. You need that liquid gold to interact with the auction house. You need that liquid gold uh, to get yourself engraving books. Whatever it is, Thinking about what your plan is and not feeling like you should just buy the chest because, oh, it just seems like it's valuable is important to actually consider. But that is just my opinion on it. I want to hear from you guys. Have you guys already been on this screw the chest train? Have you guys not been buying the chest? What chest do you guys usually buy on your mains? What chest do you guys usually buy on your alts? I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you guys like my content, be sure to sub to the channel, like the video if you like it, and check me out on Twitch. I am live right now getting my booty cheeks clapped by the Voltussi, so click the link in the description box. And lastly, I want to give a shout out to my YouTube members. Thank you guys so much for supporting me. Uh, P. Ashley, 1411, and Gabriella, thank you both very, very much for your generosity. Thank you so much for supporting me and helping me continue to do this. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with me. I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Lie, lie.